Let's go to visual diagnosis, inspection. The topic is veins on underside of tongue. It is also important to observe veins on the underside of the tongue. These are often dark and purplish if there is blood stagnation. The veins in this case will usually also be swollen or knotted. If the veins are pale and flat, it, in, it can indicate blood deficiency or chi deficiency. If the veins are milky in appearance, this can indicate the presence of dampness and phlegm. The sublingual veins may also be longer than normal, which is a sign of heat. It is not only the two main sublingual veins that can change color and shape. Small veins on the lower surface of the tongue changing color and shape is a sign of blood stagnation. Similarly, small purple spots appearing on the underside of the tongue is a sign of blood stagnation. Under normal circumstances, two thick bluish purple vessels can be seen lateral to the frenulum. Their diameter is no more than 2.7 millimeters and their length is no greater than one third the distance from the sublingual caruncle, base of, which is the base of the tongue, to the tip of the tongue. They have no branches, varicosities, or bulges. The following are considered abnormal changes in the hypoglossal veins. The shape of the vein is bulging due to varicosities. The length of the vein extends past the midpoint of the length of the tongue. The branches of the hypoglossal vein are visible or as filled as the hypoglossal vein proper. The color is dark than usual, or the peripheral ends of the veins are cystic, with thick crown processes that may resemble a cluster of grapes. The diameter is wider than 2.7 millimeters. The indication of hypoglossal vein abnormalities is chi and blood stagnation. The sublingual veins should always form part of a routine examination of the tongue body. Under normal conditions, the two veins under the tongue are barely visible, and they have a very faint pale red color. When they become clearly visible, they are by definition pathological. One should observe the size and the color of the sublingual veins. You can see here the bluish sublingual veins. If the veins are indistended but not dark, it indicates chi deficiency, whereas if they are too thin in relation to the sides of the tongue and the patient's body itself, it indicates yin deficiency. The most important sign with regard to sublingual veins is their purple color. If they are distended and dark purple, it indicates blood stasis, usually in the upper, upper burner, which is the lungs or heart, but it, it may also refer to the liver. Descended and dark sublingual veins are more common in the elderly, and they give an early indication of blood stasis before the rest of the tongue body becomes purple. Observation of the sublingual veins, therefore, has an important preventative value. Dark and dry sublingual veins indicate severe deficiency with empty heat. Dark swollen and wet veins indicate lung spleen and kidney be deficiency with accumulation of fluids. Such observation is important also in chronic painful obstruction syndrome. If the sublingual veins are reddish and shiny, they indicate damp heat. If they are yellowish, dampness. While if they are white and slippery, cold dampness. And if they are swollen as well, dampness and blood stasis. In modern China, some doctors consider the appearance of sublingual veins as a useful prodromal sign of certain diseases. The main signs are as follows. Dark purple is hardening of the brain arteries. Descended dark and crooked is hardening of arteries. Hypertension, if veins protrude a lot and look like earthworms, the disease is severe. Small nodules like, like rice or wheat grains is hardening of arteries and heart disease. The summary for sublingual veins, if it is distended but not dark, this is a, in, an indication of chi deficiency. When it, is, when it is thin, there's seen deficiency. Distended and dark, blood stasis in the upper burner. Dark and dry is with severe deficiency with empty heat. When it is dark, swollen, and wet, there is lung, spleen, and kidney deficiency with accumulation of fluids. When the sublingual veins are reddish and shiny, there's damp heat. When it's yellowish, there's dampness. When it's white and slippery, there's cold dampness. Swollen and white and sticky is dampness and blood stasis. Sublingual veins in Western medicine, when it is dark purple, that is a hardening of the brain arteries. If it's distended, dark and crooked, hardening of arteries, hypertension. But if the veins protrude a lot and look like earthworms, the disease is severe. And small nodules like rice or wheat grains is hardening of arteries and heart disease. Thank you so much for your attention.